your afterwife afterlife can be a wonderful, incredible new beginning in your life. However, if you're still struggling to get over your marriage and to rediscover your identity as a single guy, it can be a very, very difficult time. In fact, it can be probably one of the hardest times in your life. Today is very overcast here. It's drizzling a bit. So I can't think of a better time to talk about getting over your ex and getting on with your afterlife because this is your opportunity to really fully embrace your life and to rediscover your identity and to accomplish all those things that you wanted for yourself in life. So let's talk about how we, how we move on. The first thing to recognize is that mourning your marriage is a completely normal experience. You know, um, something has passed on here. You know, there has been a death in your life. And so it's completely normal to, uh, to experience loss and to mourn that loss. So I don't want to cast any shame on anyone who's having trouble getting, getting past it. That being said, you do have to get past it. You cannot allow this experience to dominate your, the rest of your life. Um, yeah, there's a lesson in these experiences for us all, and each lesson is completely unique to the individual. So I don't know what's in it for you, but I do know that getting through this experience is part of that lesson. So here are a few tips that you can use to um, hopefully push through this and get to the other side. Because once you do, it's pretty sweet. It really is. So the first one I mentioned in, my, uh, in a recent video is if you can just think of her as not being the girl you married. If you think that just for a moment, all the cells in a human body are replaced over a period of time. I think like 99% get replaced every year or so. And um, so technically, physically, she's nowhere near the girl that you married. Um, secondly, we're constantly evolving and changing and becoming something new every single day. And whatever evolutionary process she's gone through has taken her further and further away from being that girl that you married. So in a way, you could say that the girl you married has died and that this person that's divorcing you now is someone that you really don't know very well. And in a way, psychologically, that makes it a lot easier because then you're no longer trying to grab onto something that doesn't exist anymore. Because I think we all hold on to these memories of when we fell in love and, well, that's not what you have anymore. That person has long gone. And, um, yeah, you just have to let go of her. And this cranky old bitch that dropped you, you need to get rid of her too because she's holding you back from experiencing your true life. You know, when you're sad, when you're really, really depressed, getting a little angry is okay because anger is a much better emotion than depression or sadness. So feel free to get a little angry because it'll take you on your path toward feeling happy. I promise you. The second thing you have to remember is that life is a subjective experience. It's not something that objectively has meaning without you giving it meaning. So just to get a little esoteric on you, um, we assign values to things. These values don't exist in the world without us. We say things are right or wrong, good or bad. We make that decision. And as we um, experience you know, things like divorce, we continue to assign these values, not only to the event and the people in, that are involved in the event, but ourselves as well. You know? um, and in that comes you know, a whole host of emotions, ranging from feeling sorry for yourself and depression, to um, self-loathing, to 
hating her, to uh, you know, a sense of hopelessness. And all of these experiences are generated from inside you. They do not exist outside of you. These are not happening to you. They are happening from you. And once you get that into your head, and you understand that that's what's happening, then it just becomes a process of slowly changing your thoughts about the experience. Because as you change those thoughts, you can change your outcome, your experience, and where you go from here. The first thing you have to do is identify the thought that is creating the emotion. You may have to close your eyes and just think about what's going on here and why is it you're feeling so sad? What thought do you keep repeating to yourself that causes you to feel that, that spike of emotion? Because it's that thought that you need to dismantle. You need to think about it and say, okay, so I've been rejected. You know, the person that I love most in the world has left me. Um, all my plans are gone. Um, you know, the person that I created for myself, this identity as her husband, as her lover, as whatever, and the plans that went with that identity is dead. So what's that emotion? What am I feeling in that moment? And then how do you flip it around? Um, the fact that she's gone may very well be a good thing. Um, you know, two things cannot exist in the same place at the same time. It's one of my favorite old sayings. So if you've got someone in your life that's not working, even though you want it to work, it's just not working, well, you're allowing that person to continue filling the space where someone else that might be more ideal could fit. Or something else. Maybe, maybe that someone else is just you. Maybe you getting to love yourself and to give yourself the things that you really want for your life is, is the part that you're missing. I don't know. I don't want to psychoanalyze you, but just kind of give you some suggestions about you know, what it is that is causing you to have this um, inability to move on. Because it eventually becomes pathological. And what I mean by that is um, these negative thoughts and this state of sorrow and hopelessness will manifest itself in physical form. You will get sick and it may kill you. It's a, it's a form of um, self-destruction and you can't allow it. You just gotta see it for what it is and stop it. So like I said earlier, pain is a natural experience when you are going through a separation or a divorce. And yes, there has been a death here. The relationship is dead. Um, you cannot revive it. So there's no point in trying. Um, what is still alive is your attachment to that experience. And there's a lot of aspects to that experience that can create attachments. There's obviously the memories, there's the hope of future, there's the role that you play, you know, as a husband or a father or whatever, there's this, this um, role, this identity that you created for yourself in that relationship is also dead. And it's really not any of those things that are really causing the pain it's your attachment to it. And your attachment is your belief that you need that experience in order to be whole and complete. And that is what causes the suffering. So long as you believe there is something outside of you that can make you feel better or help you um, be more complete or I don't know what other, what, how, whatever else to put it, but it's those beliefs that are showing you where you're, you're um, clinging, you're struggling. And you just need to consider that suffering, whatever pain that you're feeling, and track it back to the thought or the belief that caused it. And then ask yourself, is it true? Is it true that you need her to be a happy man? Is it true all the time? Is it absolutely true? And the, there's no way you can say yes. Is it true under all circumstances, no matter what? Well, the answer to that is no. So if the answer to that is no, then why are you driving yourself crazy? Why aren't you out there creating opportunities for yourself to live the life that you want? 
at some point you just got to let go and you just have to move on. And the sooner you do it, the happier you're going to be. I promise you. So the, the great thing about the afterlife after your wife is gone is you get this freedom. And I think that some of you guys are just a little bit afraid of what that freedom means and what you're gonna do with it. Because there's kind of a responsibility that goes with it. You know, it's not, it's not free. You know, you, you actually have to take advantage of that opportunity. And maybe, you know, um, that is the part of this that is, that is freaking you out a little bit. Um, but let me just tell you to relax because it's really not that complicated. What you'll notice over time as you release your attachment to your ex and you allow this sense of hopelessness to pass over you and you allow this sense of loss to um, fall into your memory, that um, you've got this great, wonderful opportunity to, um, to start doing things that you really enjoy doing. Start with the things you enjoyed before you got married and then start broadening your perspective into what possibilities there are for, for travel or research or writing or, you know, how can you turn this experience into something positive? What experience are you having right now that maybe you could turn around and turn it into something that would help you become a stronger, healthier, better person or, or help others with it? You know what I mean? Um, maybe joining a men's group where you can talk about your feelings and help other guys get through their feelings would be a way to um, find value in this experience. But there's lots and lots of ways. The memories that we have from childhood are oftentimes very, very sweet. I remember going to the beach with my family and um, hanging out with my friends and have some terrific, terrific memories. I grew up in Hawaii, so the beaches were terrific. I mean, it was just unreal how much fun we had. And of course, as Generation X, our parents were not deeply involved in our upbringing. So it was sort of like, you know, being raised by a pack of wolves. But um, those memories are sweet and wonderful. They really are, and I enjoy them. But I don't mourn them. I don't, I don't, um, I don't feel sad about them. And the tr same is true for my marriage. There were some wonderful memories that I have from that, ma that marriage. Now, I can focus in on all the terrible shit. It's helpful for making videos. Um, but there was also a lot of really, really terrific times that we had. I don't mourn the loss of those times because they're not gone. They still exist in me those times cannot be redone. That time in my life is over. That's, that section of life has completed. Do you know what I mean? It's like childhood was a, was a lifetime. You know, being an adolescent and going to college or having that time in your life, that's, that's kind of a lifetime in and of itself as well. Being married and being, uh, you know, in a family and all of that, well, that's a different section of life and it's a lifetime in and of itself. And if yours has come to an end, then it means that it's time for you to start a new life. And this new life has something in it for you and you have to find it. You have to just be, put on your, your explorer's hat and just go out and find it because it has meaning for you and it will really uh, matter in the long run. But life 2.0, the afterlife, whatever you wanna call it, it is absolutely worth it. I have never been happier. Now, it took me a couple of years to really kind of feel completely free of it, of, of all the pain and the anger and all that stuff. And I see people in the comments saying, oh, John, you're so bitter and anger, angry. No, I'm not bitter and angry at all, at all. I mean, I can still go back and relive those experiences and I can have those memories. And I think that I do that for the sake of um, the audience so they can identify within them what they're experiencing. But to be honest with you, I, I am not dictated by my ex in any way or any of the emotions associated with my ex. In fact, if anything, that relationship serves as, a, um, as an education. Like, 
like a college education in relationships and women. And also in myself and understanding what I'm willing to put up with and what I'm not. It's given me an appreciation for the time that I have now. It gives me an appreciation for the people in my life and, the, uh, and my kids. Um, and it has also given me an appreciation for my ex. And I can be compassionate and empathetic to her. I see how much she's suffering. And um, I can see how making bad decisions can really, really uh, have a negative impact on your life. And I can also see in her how the inability to get past it, because she just lives in a state of shame. She just blames herself for making all these bad decisions, which she has, but there's no point in blaming anymore. You just got to move on. You just got to, you just got to move on and live your life. And I would say the same is true for you. If you feel like you're responsible for the loss of your marriage, eh, you can't blame yourself. You just got to move on. You know, it happened. You can't change it. So move forward. You got to move forward. Take the lesson, learn it, don't do it again, and move forward. That is the only thing that this, this experience can give you, is the opportunity to be better. And um, take it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Well, it looks like the rain has stopped, so every bad thing must come to an end. And just like rain, maybe it's not so bad, you know? Maybe it allows new things to grow. I know that's really corny, but I just had to go there. You know, you just got to go there. But honest to God, you know, you just got to move on. There's a new life out there waiting for you. Just go find it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Stay healthy, and if you can, stay single.